In this demonstration, we're now going to take a look at resource groups, something we keep coming back to over and over again, and tag in of those resource groups. So let's head over to the Azure portal. And in the Azure portal, we'll go straight over to resource groups on the left hand side. And you can see I've got a couple of resource groups already there in a variety of locations. And I'm going to go ahead and just simply add a new one. So I click add. And in the basics here, the first thing I need to do is choose my subscription where I'm going to put that resource group and then give that resource group a name. So I'll call this one AZ exam demo. Uh, then I choose the region. Now you can put objects in the resource group from other regions. The purpose of the region for the resource group is where the metadata for that resource group is actually stored all the details about it the tags etc it ultimately still has to be stored somewhere and so that's the purpose of this region here so it doesn't really matter too much where you put it but the one benefit is when you are using arm templates later on and saying okay i want to deploy this virtual machine and asks you for the region to deploy the virtual machine in, you can simply state inherit from resource groups. So it does still help to put the resource groups in the same region if you have a primary region where you deploy your workloads to. Following on from the basics, we then hit tags and right away we can simply input tags directly on our resource groups as well. So you may have seen in some of the subscription demos, we can put tags there, but we can also put tags directly on the resource groups. And there was that tag in spreadsheet that we covered in one of the earlier modules. That's a good thing to kind of, you know, set your stage or in terms of what tags you want to keep and how you're going to tag. Think about that first before you just go in here and start tagging. But when you are ready and you've come up with the tags that you want, uh, certainly through automation, you could deploy these much more easily. But if you need to do them in the portal, things like cost center are very common. You know, I'll just put cost center. Uh, lab could be my cost center, could be the HR department, could be, you know, it depends on your specific situation. Uh, and then you might have other things like maintenance windows, a common one. Uh, I could say, you know, this is going to be Saturday 9 p.m. Uh, it could be a maintenance window that I have, and you might have different ways of storing these, you know, even JSON templates in some cases. Uh, but it's very important to make sure that you tag everything that you build so that you know, you know, who built it, what it's for, who's paying for it, etc. Business owner and technical owner, if nothing else, knowing who the machines and other services that are in there belong to is so, so important when it comes to like, you know, reporting on cost, etc. Uh, so if we go ahead and click review and create, and then click create, and that will go ahead and create our resource group, which only takes a second or two, and then we can immediately go into that resource group. So here we are in AZ exam demo, and I wanna bring your attention to a few things. One, we have an activity log in here, so this will show you one update right now. If we refresh, we see the update resource group, and that's the first activity log update from any new resource group that gets created. We have an access control section, so we can assign permissions. We cover RBAC permissions in identity, uh, but we can add role assignments directly to the resource group. So think of this as another boundary for given access. Perhaps we don't want to give subscription access or any role in the subscription to somebody, but we just want to give them access to certain resources that we put in the resource group. This is the place we can do that. Tags we already discussed, and again, you can create them when you, you know, build your resource group and also add and modify tags as you go. Events are a way to trigger and are more associated with things like logic apps, uh, event grid, etc. Uh, not something we need to cover right now. If we go down, though, a few other quick things to be aware of. Resource costs. Uh, this is a great area because if we've got lots of resources in our group, again, right now, empty resource groups, it's not showing really anything there. But as resources get put in the resource group, this is a place where you can see the roll up of those costs as well. We then have something that is really important, and you may get asked questions on the exam for this, is deployments. And we do cover ARM templates later on as well. Uh, but essentially, you can go back here and look at all the deployments that have occurred in that resource group. So every time whether you deploy from the portal, whether you deploy from an ARM template, you can see those deployments, you can view the templates, you can redeploy them, and you'll see more about that later on. Next, we have policies, and policies are very much the same as the policies we can apply to subscriptions. So if you remember from the very first section of the course, we did subscription policies. Same thing here, we can assign a policy or a group of policies via any initiative. You know, maybe this resource group, we're restricting the virtual machine instance SKUs that are allowed to be provisioned. Maybe we want to enforce some type of encryption. Those are things you can then do directly on the resource group. And if we go back, a few other quick things. One is automation script. 
Uh, and this is also where you can just download the template um, you know, for all the resources that are actually in there right now. So deployments were showing you previous deployments. Automation script is really just downloading that resource group as an ARM template. Moving further on, we have a lot of options to jump ahead in monitoring. So we can get to monitoring through Azure Monitor. So we can access that through services, as you may have seen in the monitoring piece of the course as well. Uh, but we can also access it directly from here as well. And last but not least, we do have a new support request option we can submit directly from the resource group as well. Um, but with that, that's really all you need to know for resource groups. You know, hopefully this gets you up and running. Just be aware of what you can and can't do directly from the resource group area. Common things to look out for are the deployments, the policies you can apply to resource groups, uh, and just knowing uh, that you can assign RBAC roles directly to a resource group as a way to restrict permissions in case you get questions around, you know, user scenarios and things like that on your exam. And with that concludes this demonstration.